the Upanishad series the polarity of thoughts and emotions each desire leads you to pain desire is sorrow the moment you realize and in vision each desire leading you to pain unhappiness and suffering that very moment desires will begin to lose their grip over you you do not have to make any effort to leave these this realization is enough even the desire not to have revert then vanishes out of ignorance you start forgetting pain when you realize that desires create pain you start forgetting the pain pain is there it has to be realized and when you begin to negate the pain this is not the way when you realize that desire is the cause of the pain pain is the outcome and desire is the the root by cutting off the foliage you cannot remove the tree as long as roots are there the new foliage will come as long as desire remains new states of pain and suffering will arise when you realize desire is the cause of the pain that alone is enough that very moment that very moment desire starts losing grip over you the moment all desire starts losing grip over you their dissolution begins and that moment another thing happens time to dissolves future shatters past vanishes only this moment remains in that moment existence is but life is no more the day you are able to envision the entire existence hidden in life you are free of the process of birth and rebirth there are two things you can say in the beginning god was he hide himself and manifested you now it is for you to hide your identity and manifest that presence by god i mean the presence the totality the oneness the harmony through your life and living this is existence the day you envision the existence hidden in life that very moment you are freed of the process of birth and rebirth life is some total of desires aggregate aggregate of desires on the surface of the existence it is the aggregate of desires when they accumulate on the surface of existence life assumes a form rebirth happens only life full of desires the intensity of desire is so intense that your current body cannot contain it as a result you desire a new body process of rebirth continues the moment all desires vanish you need no body mind realm you are freed of the process of rebirth you can call this as liberation you can call this as kaivalya kaivalya means liberation before this thought becomes desire comes into you or you become aware of any particular desire in you there is a thought 
each thought and emotion has a negative and positive polarity just like electricity. In the moment when thought or emotion arises, two polarities are there. And if you learn the art of going beyond the polarity, then you enter the realm of no mind. Otherwise, you remain within the quagmire of thought and that conflict and confusion these thoughts and emotions create. Each thought and emotion creates a conflict in you. It has a polarity, the positive and the negative. Poles. If you can go beyond the polarities, understand in nature, that you can do by understanding the nature, then you will not be within the quagmire of thoughts and emotions and no conflict or confusion will be created in you. There is a Zen Sutra. The Zen master says, the Zen master said, while I was in Zazen, a number of wolves gathered around me. When I was in Zazen, Zazen means meditation, a number of wolves gathered around me, licking the tip of my nose and sniffing my windpipe. But because I remained in the right state of mind. I was not bitten. A very fundamental life, a very fundamental law, a very fundamental law of life is that if you become afraid, you give energy to the other to make you more afraid. The very idea of fear in you creates the opposite idea in the other. Each thought has a negative and positive polarity just like electricity. If you have the negative pole on the other side, a positive pole is created. It is an automatic process. If you are afraid, the other immediately feels a desire arising in him to oppress you or to torture you. If you are not afraid, the desire in the other will simply disappear. And it is not only so with man, it is so even with wolves. With animals it is also same. If you can remain in the right state of undistracted silence, undistracted silence or just a witness to everything that is happening. What actually happens? The moment an emotional disturbance comes, we get lost into it and we are not witness to it. As long as you remain witness to everything that is happening, with no idea arising in you, no idea will arise in the other around you. There is an old Indian story. In the Hindu heaven, there is a tree called Kaltaru. It means the wish-fulfilling tree. By accident, a traveler arrived there and he was so tired that he sat under the tree. He was hungry. He was very hungry. So he thought, if somebody was here, I could ask for food. But there seems to be nobody. The moment idea of food appeared in his mind, Food suddenly appeared and he was so hungry that he did not bother to think about it, where the food came from, who brought this food, he ate. Then he started feeling sleepy and he thought if there was a bed, 
here so I could sleep. As you wished, the bed appeared. However, while lying on the bed, he thought, what is happening? I do not see anybody here. Food has come. Now a bed has come. Maybe there are ghosts doing things to me. And as soon as he thought of ghost, that ghosts may be doing this as normally happens, ghosts appeared. Then he became afraid and he thought, now they will kill me. And as the thought came that these ghosts will kill me, they killed him. In life, the law is the same. If you think of ghosts, they are bound to appear. This story is very meaningful. There is nothing like a, a wish-fulfilling tree. But the moment a thought appears to you, you start getting a vision and you start seeing everything around according to your thoughts and emotions. If you are afraid, there is fear within you, you will start seeing horrible scenes and you will feel vulnerable. In life, the law is the same if you think of ghosts, they are bound to appear. Think and you will see it. If you think of enemies, you will create them. If you think of friends, you they will appear. If you love, love appears around you. If you hate, hate appears. Whatsoever you go on thinking, is being fulfilled by a certain law. There is a cosmic law that whatsoever, it is said as man is, whatever is your thought in the same relation, things begin to happen. I would never allow any thought to come into me that will create fear, hatred, jealousy, or lust or anything like that. Whatsoever you go on thinking is being fulfilled by a certain law. If you do not think anything, then nothing happens to you. The master simply sat there in the graveyard. The wolves came, but finding nobody is there because the master was still silent. They did not find anybody there. They sniffed. They must have sniffed to see whether the man was thinking or not. Thoughts never leave you. You go on thinking each moment. Something happened. You start thinking about it. In sociology, this is called a public opinion. My sociology teacher used to give an example. A girl was riding a bicycle and she was walking on the street, riding the bike on the street. All of a sudden, her book bag fell. And holding the bicycle and picking up the books were difficult for her. So a boy was passing there he told her to hold on and he picked up the books and handed over to the girl. They exchanged a, a smile, which is normal in such cases. They thanked one another and dispersed. Someone was watching this situation and within a week, the news spread that the two were seen very often in public places holding hands, thought process, and spending hours together. This is how things happen. 
Probably the wolves must have sniffed to see whether the man was thinking or not. They circled around and watched, but there was nobody, just emptiness. What to do with emptiness? This emptiness or silence or bliss cannot be destroyed. Not even wolves are that bad. They felt the sacredness of this emptiness and they disappeared. The villagers thought that this man had gone, had done some secret rites. But the master said, I have not done anything, nor could I have done so. I simply sat and everything changed. But what happens? You are sitting, but there is a volcano going on. And the thoughts, the emotions creating the stampede. Something you had thought, something surfaced, something you have seen in your dream or a kind of a past memory surfaced, your emptiness, your silence, your bliss is destroyed. This emptiness that this master had, this silence, the bliss, could not be destroyed, not even, not even the wolves are that bad. So what to talk about thoughts, these images, they cannot destroy that. The anecdote is a parable. If you sit in this world silently, if you live silently, meditatively I use the word aware that these things are happening around me. Every day I will sit down and do nothing. Just I am sitting in my chair. If the laptop screen is open, it is open. Whatsoever is happening on the screen, let it happen. If you live silently as an alive nothingness, the world will become a paradise for you. All wolves of thoughts and emotions, the past memories will disappear. There is no need to do anything else. Just right state of your consciousness and everything is done. And the moment you get involved with those thoughts and emotions, you will find your energy begins to drain. Your energy begins to drain. As such, I do not do any meditation now. It has been many years. But every day, I will sit down on the chair and let my body become still. I statue-like. In that, the breathing almost becomes as if there is no breath going on, but the breathing must be there. But it becomes, it is not chaotic. Instead, it is as slow as possible, very slow. There is no need to move any part of the body. In that, whatever tension is there in the body, that begins to disappear and you come to know that this particular part of the body have a tension. You attend to that part and that becomes relaxed. If you live silently as an alive nothingness, the world will become a paradise. The wolves will disappear. There is no need to do anything else just right state of your consciousness and everything happens on its own. There are two laws. One is the law of the mind. With the law of mind, you go on creating the hell around you. Friends become foe. Lovers prove enemies. Flowers become thorns. Life becomes a burden. And then you 
wonder why am I alive to see all this pain? One simply suffers life. With the law of mind you live in hell. Wherever you live, if you slip out of the mind, if you slip out of the conditioning, if you slip out of the memory, you have slipped out of that law and suddenly you will live in a totally different world. That different world is a state of freedom or nirvana. The different world is caught then without doing, without doing anything, everything starts happening. You attain to God indirectly. When you slip out of the mind, suddenly you realize that you are surrounded by peace. If And you are not the doer in that very moment. If you want to remain a doer, you will live in ego and the wolves will surround you and you will be constantly in trouble, in pain, in suffering. If you drop the ego or the idea of being the doer and you simply relax into life and or in a let go, sometimes unconsciously we post, we read a quote, we like it and we post, but we do not understand the real meaning of it. And whenever by any mechanism, you encounter a post. First and the foremost thing is, why did I encounter this particular post? I must understand it first. It, but we think that we want to teach others but not learn. When traversing along the road, I encounter a particular situation, I look at it. My first responsibility is why it has come to me. It must have a relevance in my life. It may be something that I need it at the moment. Someone sometimes a few days ago had posted something, a quote of Buddha. It's a beautiful quote, but the person forget that the existence brought this quote for that person to see that this is the need for her. It is like this psychologists have discovered when you put all kinds of food in front of the children, infants, they pick up only that which is suitable, healthy for them and the rest of the dishes, howsoever attractive they may be, they will not pick up. And when they are sick, they are not feeling well. They will pick up only that food which is beneficial for them during that state of physical discomfort. So when this person posted this post, I was happy that at least this post has been posted. But it was done as if to teach to the others not to learn from that. And that's where the mistake comes in. First and the foremost necessity is mine when I get that particular post or it is the energy of Buddha. It is the godly energy, the positive energy that has surfaced that particular quote out of millions, out of thousands in front of you. It flashes in front of your eyes. The first and the foremost thing is allow it to sink into you. Why did this appear to me at this, appeared in front of me this very moment? You will realize that this is what God has chosen for you. This is what your innerness has chosen for you that you have to understand this, live by this. But instead of that, we click a like, maybe 100 likes per minute or 
copy and paste or post these messages and finish. No, when I post something, I must understand and see its relevance for me. Why has it come and what it is going to do to the others? Taking that post, I further elaborated it because it was a post, it was a quote of Buddha. Buddha happened 2500 years ago. Since then, the human consciousness has changed. The old wine has to be presented in a new bottle. This is the role of the living master to present the old wine into the new bottle. And I explained it a little more and posted it. But the person remained unaware. As soon as the code was posted, the person forgets that I have posted a code. I remember the effect of each post that I do. And if you drop the ego or the idea of being a doer, and you simply relax into life and are in a let go. You are again back into the world of God, back in the Garden of Eden. Indeed, Adam has returned home. Then things happen. The Christian story says that there was no need for Adam to do anything in the Garden of Eden. Everything was available. But then he fell from the grace and he was thrown out. He became knowledgeable. Ego came in. And since then humanity has been suffering. Each person has to come back, return to the Garden of Eden again. The path is from doing towards happening. From ego towards no ego. From mind towards no mind. No mind is what meditation is all about. That different world is nirvana or freedom. That different world is God. Look at life without the thoughts, without emotions, without the mind. Put the mind to rest. What it is a child? Why did Jesus, was he a fool to say to tell Nicholas that who can enter the kingdom of your father, one who is childlike. Childlike, child is symbolic of a particular kind of innocence. That innocence, if it comes to an adult, the child is unaware of his innocence, but you can be aware of that childlike innocence. Just become child again, childlike innocence. Unlearn whatsoever you have learned. Drop verbalization. Listen to these words with no word arising in you. When Krishna played the flute, it was a message of silence. Echoing through the flute, his beloved, his concert, Radha understood the message of silence. There were no words, only a sound. And sound was a clarion call and sound created an inner overflowing silence in Radha. She understood the message. The same sound could not be understood on the battlefield by Arjun. He has to give words to this sound. He has to compose a song in that particular tone, in that particular meter, so that ultimately the sound reaches. What are you hearing now? You're hearing the words. Because you cannot decipher my silence. If you can decipher my silence, then I will become silent and I will not speak. I will not use the words. Silence is a meter. Silence is a musical composition. What happens sometimes when a music is composed, the musician composes a tone, tune. 
and then he passes on this tune to the songwriter and songwriter has to write a song in a particular meter that the song and the words fit into that tone into that tune the music is composed the other time the process goes differently first the words are created then the words around the words a sound is created and a music is created it can happen either way so krishna's silence could not be understood by arjun he knew the silence composed words to fit in a in a particular meter a meter of 32 syllables each 32 syllables is divided into four parts of eight syllables each when you look at the composition of bhagavad gita there is each sutra have two lines each line is further divided into two components of eight syllables each eight four so 32 this particular meter in the art of composition is called anushta meter this is one of the most beautiful meter in which things are composed in his english language when william shakespeare composed he composed a particular rhyming scheme in the form of sonnet ghazal rubai these are all different meters in which a message is composed rubai is a four line composition where the entire message is encompassed in these four lines rhyming with one another maybe the first line rhyming with the second or first rhyming with the third this all depends on the poet how the the rhyming scheme happens umar khayyam rubai in each each rubai is complete in itself with the meaning this we call it zindagi ka falsafa the essence of life is composed in one composition of four lines william shakespeare used a sonnet of 14 lines to encompass the message of life and for that matter krishna has to use the words to fit in that meter of in that tune of silence and suddenly when you have learned drop the verbalization listen to these words with no word arising in you suddenly a wave of freshness passes through you then energy arises in you which is of the beyond this word has never been there before this bird is completely unaware of the past he has never sung like that before today is absolutely fresh and the bird is absolutely and totally here now if you can listen without words suddenly as if knife penetrates through your being the freshness of life will penetrate your accumulated dust as if a ray of light has penetrated the darkness all around you except for human beings everything is fresh touch the trees they have a little talk with the river look at the sky watch the stars lie down on the earth relax go to the sea watch the waves infinitely coming and coming and coming without any business what business do waves have to arise there is no utility in that there is simply a delight in energy and by and by you become aware 
that dust is disappearing from your mind. Mirror is getting cleaned. Language and addiction with language is the root cause. Words and words and words and your being is hidden behind all these words. The more words gather, the farther away you are from your being, from yourself and the more difficult it will become for you to return home. It will be difficult for Adam to return home. Because there is a forest, a wild forest of words, of emotions, of thoughts. This is almost like a chaos. Life is fresh like breeze. Mind can never be fresh. If you understand this, then look at life without the mirror of the mind. Put the mind aside. I am not saying through the mind completely it is useful. I am using the mind because it is a useful tool. It helps me to form the sentences, to select the word that may be most appropriate on its own. But I am not making any effort for it. It is happening. The words are falling. A particular process has begun. The words start falling into this the tune that silence is creating. It is useful. Use it. It is a useful biocomputer. Use it, but do not be used by it. When it is needed, use it. There are many situations where it is needed. You have to calculate and it is needed. You have to remember the way to go to the station again, you will need it. You have to remember many things and you will need it. Whenever it is needed, use it. Whenever it is not needed, put it aside. Just like your laptop, you need it when you need to send an email or you have to do some work. And if the mind is allowed to rest, two things will happen. If mind is allowed to rest, which we do not, we do not allow mind to rest. And if you allow the mind to rest, two things will happen to you. Life will become fresh and mind, life will become fresh and mind will become very powerful. Your mind currently is very tired. 24 hours it remains in use. Even a mechanism needs to relax. Your car, automobile needs to relax. Even a car needs to be put to rest. Even a machine gets tired. Our scientists the latest research says that even a machine gets tired, even metal gets tired and everything in that, in the existence needs a rest. Your mind is a mechanism. It needs a rest, but it goes on working 24 hours without a rest. And your mind goes on working day and night. Awake and asleep, mind goes on working, it gets tired. And when it gets tired, it starts giving the wrong information. You have cooling device in your laptop, isn't it? There is a fan that constantly cools the heat generated by the movement as you are using your laptop. But what about the mind? We do not have a fan to cool down the mind. God did not create that. The, the manufacturers of the laptop, they naturally created a cooling device. The moment the cooling device begins to malfunction, your laptop or the computer gets very hot and it starts malfunctioning. Such is the situation of the mind. Mind need to be put at rest. Awake and asleep, mind goes on working, gets tired. So it cannot function well. It is a constant grinding machine 
that goes on grinding. If there is nothing to grind, then too it goes on grinding. It remains on. It goes on chewing old stuff again and again and you give it the old stuff and it goes on chewing the old stuff again and again like a cow. Cow eats the food fast and then it goes on chewing it. Learn how to give rest to the mind. You will have a more powerful mind, a more useful mind. You have, will have a more beautiful memory, but you have plagued your memory with unwanted things. You have plagued your memory with unwanted things. You will have more powerful logic and reason. If you can put it aside, you will always be available to fresh life and the fresh life will be available to you each moment. When you come home, put the mind away. It is needed in the office. Mind is not needed with your children. Play with them. No need to be an adult. Be a person. When you return home, what you do? You go and take a shower. You undress yourself. You go to your shower. You stay there for a longer period of time. If you have a bathtub, a jacuzzi, you lie down in that. Forget all about everything. The layers that cover you. You lay as if you are lying naked in the lap of your mother, the mother of That mind is not needed. Become a person who need to be a doctor to your wife, to your children. With a patient it is perfectly okay. But she is your wife. You need not be a doctor. With a friend you need not be an engineer or a businessman. You need not be anybody. You can simply be yourself again, a child playing on the shore, collecting sh sea shells for no purpose at all. These purposeless moments will allow you to be fresh again. What else can be a message on this day? Merry Christmas and seasons. Greetings to each one of you. I have overflowed the silence wrapped in the, the words.